Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make two styles of shaker card. I haven't made one for quite a while on the channel. I did have a video of one that I made probably about six weeks, two months ago, but I lost all the footage. So it has been a, a good, you know, time before I've done one and I love making shaker cards. So here I have some samples that I've made for the Daisy May Designs release. I've got three others as well, which were on Hachanda today. When this goes out, you'll see it if you watch Hachanda. And I will link in, when I talk through the product, I'll link in those cards as well, because I've got pictures of them, just to give you a bit of inspiration. If you follow me, you know I love Daisy May Designs. Her and For the Love of Stamps and Woodware are my three, I think, kind of real big go-tos when it comes to stamps. I just always love the images and they're really nice to colour. But what I just wanted to show you some of the ones I've made here and then I've got the two styles of the shaker card that we're gonna make. Really straightforward, but using the little balls that I'm using inside rather than sequins gives it a real kind of snowfall look which is why I've called it the snowfall shaker card. So first of all just wanted to show you these ones here and I'll show you the stamps and dies that go with them. So I've made this style card before, I'll link up here a tutorial if you want to see how you get that shape but I've done here the hot chocolate with the cream and the marshmallows on top and then you can see those gorgeous 3D glittery stars, it's such a pretty card, absolutely adore this one. Now this is using I'll bring them all in here. So this one is, I've got to go and label all these once I've done this video, because uh, then I know where I am. Where does, oh, here it is. So you get two parts to this one, and this is the snowman and the teacup stamps. So you can have the cream and the lovely teacup there, which is the one that I've got for this one, or you can have the snowman in the teacup. And there he is there, and he's just so cute. And you get the candy canes as well, and I've used some glossy accents on the candy canes. I've used some Nuvo drops here and here, and then he's all on foam, so he's really dimensional, this one. But you can see there, I've got the little glossy accents as well on the berries. He's so cute, it's snow cute. And they're the matching sentiments that go with it. This is also one of the new square edges, the dies. I'll show you those in a moment as well because they just obviously add to it and I think it looks really, really sweet. And I've done that as a top folding and I've just rounded off the corners there. So that one's very you know, straightforward, just your mats and your layers, but I thought it was quite sweet. And then these are the shaker cards that we're gonna to make today. So I've got this one here, which is Have a Hoot of a Christmas and it's using the Sleepy Owl. And I've wanted to do like a blizzard. So <laughs> there's loads in here, but it's got such a nice look to it. When it all falls there, and they all move around. It just looks really, really nice. It's a great interactive card for your children and your grandchildren, but then adults as well. I love this. I just sit here playing around and you'll see I've got the stars there as well. Same as on the teacup, but this one I've added some Nuvo drops and this is the white blizzard, I think it was. And again, just those glossy accents on the bell and the eyes, just really pull it all together and again on the berries there as well. This is using two of the stamps from the collection. Also there's the dies, so you can buy them separately if you want, but you can also buy bundles, so that's always good. But there's the Sleepy Owl. Now because I received all these early on, they were still waiting for the dies to come for the owl, so I just fussy cut the owl. But you can also decoupage, so you can stamp the hat and the scarf and layer it up. But I used the owl and the sentiment there, have a hoot, which you can see. Really, really cute, do like that one. But then I also mixed it with the Robin. So the Red Robin stamps, you get the twigs. Really, really nice, so I'll be using that again. So that is kind of mixing in two. And really it's kind of mixing in three because I've also used the star from the teacup, which is this one here. So they do all, you know, mix in nicely, but yeah, that's the, the twigs or the tree branches there. But it's just so, so fun. And then for this one here, which I kind of, it's kind of my favorite because I don't know, again, I just love, but just look how it all, you can see there, I'm trying not to get the glare from my lamps. It's just got such a nice, and it's, you can hear it as well. Simple things, hey? But this one is using the Happy Christmas Wreath stamps. So, I mean, when you look at them, they're so tiny and you don't have to colour them. Claire has done some really nice examples on the show and also you can see on the, I think it was on the last Friday's Craft Stash Live on Facebook. But uh, you can just stamp them on white and on a coloured cardstock, looks really nice. But when you do colour them, 
Just look at how cute the images are. Again, I've used glossy accents on the gingerbread man and on the top of the drink there, the hot chocolate. And you've got the little mittens and then the bobble hat. It's just really, really sweet. And then I just finished it with a velvet bow there at the top to make it look like it's hanging. And this again is using the square dies. And that one I forgot to say is using the rectangle ones. And I love the look that these give you. And they're nesting ones as well. So that's that one. And there's the dies all to match. And then you also get the Twiggy Christmas. So I'll link a card in using that one. I really enjoyed this one. It's very, very sweet. And again, you get the dies to match. And then i done a really pretty centre easel card. Which was this very similar way that i done the new home with the Daisy May a few months back. Some of you will remember that one. Again, that one will be linked in here. And then there are the dies. So that's the ones I was on about. So you can see there to get that frame, which I'm going to do today, I cut the larger one and then that inner straight one to give me that frame. Keep the excess, the centre part, and we've put that on the back there. So nothing got wasted. And again, with that one there, it was using the larger one with the next straight one again. But these are, you know, yeah, really, really fun, really different and great if you like to do more rustic vintage kind of things. Okay, so first of all, I have stamped all of the bits that I need. Now, people always ask me when I'm using, well, I didn't say, but I'm using watercolour pens. However, for some parts of it I didn't actually add any water so for the twigs here no water was added at all but I just liked the blend that you can get just by using the water markers, water pens on their own. So I'm actually stamping on 300 GSM smooth white cardstock because it is thick it can absorb a small amount of water but what you don't want to do is go over it too much because it may start to peel and kind of um, bubble. But if you are going to use a watercolour cardstock then I use the Arteza and you can also because it's a cold press if you flip it over you'll have a smooth side on the back but if you want smooth and get hot press watercolour paper and um, you can find that online and everything so yeah that's what I'm doing today so I'm just using 300 GSM but I've gone and stamped all the bits I need so that's my sentiments I've done the robin but I, I'm not going to use him because I want to use the owl and you can see just how really cute he is and then I've just done all those bits because again I don't know if you really noticed but there is a decoupage here where I've stuck it onto here and then you can stick these over the top so again just those little details look really nice that's how the leaves or the twigs the branches that's how they look and then I've got my wreath there as well so I'm going to colour them in I will put this on high speed because I know a lot of you do like me doing this but I'm also using the Nova watercolour markers I've used these for all of them all of the samples and I'm really loving them and I said this when I showed them and I know some of you have already got them but the nib on these is so pointy and it isn't bristle it's it is like a felt so again let me just yeah they're not bristles it is a felt I mean I don't know long term how long it's going to last but I'm really enjoying them I think they're lovely and like I said I'm getting really good results with them so that's what I'm using I'm going to put some music on and I'm going to get all this coloured in
Okay, so I've stamped everything and I've gone ahead and started to do all like the sparkle and things like that because you want that to all kind of dry. And what I've used is the Nouveau Drops. This is the Glitter Drops and this is the White Blizzard. I think I said that because the White Blizzard one I've had a long time. I think this is my second one now and I'm already coming down to about here. It's just so nice and it gives you this translucent sparkle. So you still see the stamped image but you get this gorgeous sparkle. I'm not sure how well that's picking up, but it is very sparkly. So what I've done with this one is I've popped it on the hat and on the bottom of the scarf there, and then I've used the glossy accents on the eyes and on the bell there, and that's the one I've got. I've got a bigger one as well, but I quite like this little smaller one. Again, it gets used a lot. It's good. I've used that a lot in my underwater themed projects. So I've done that and then I've done the berries again the same with the glossy accents you can see there the shine that you get on the berries I think looks really nice and then with the wreath here I've used those two things again so I've used the glitter white blizzard on the snowflakes you can just see it here and then I've used the glossy accents there on the gingerbread on the tops of the hot chocolate and on the hearts and then I'm going to get my grey marker pen and just do an like an outline there just to create kind of lifts the white now with the scarf here you've got these white little stripes but they're very very small and what I used on the other one was my Posca pen I know quite a few of you have got this and I had one lady um, send me a message and she was like this is the most amazing thing ever I never knew these things existed so <laughs> it's quite funny Posca pens are brilliant it's basically paint in a pen and you just need to give it a good old shake it's got a, a barbarian inside there and you just pump it and this one is probably actually starting to run out but you will see there, especially on this, this uh, craft card, it really shows up. You can create lovely stitched um, effects and all sorts, but it is perfect for highlighting. So if you have these tight little kind of areas here where it's hard to colour, if you just go over it with the white or any colour, the Posca pens, they have them in, well, the, the range is huge. And um, But just by doing that, it just adds that more detail, kind of lifts it a little bit and do one more up here and it's good for adding snow effects on like a darker background so if I'd gone over the dots here the polka dots on the hat like I've gone over a little bit with the red I can just go in now with the white and because it's such an opaque white it will cover everything up really really handy now there is snow on these here but I've just left them white you could use the this one here which I've been using in projects now you'll start to see it coming through not that one it's this one here the fluffy stuff and you add heat to it and it expands and becomes a 3D foam. That's really fun as well. So there's lots of really fun mediums like this that you can use and add to your paper crafting just to kind of really yeah, finish them off. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do the wreath one first. So I've gone ahead and cut this one here and I used the outer die and the square. So I just laid them down on the red paper there and made sure that these were nicely even and you've got a nice border it's a hard one to do because it's not obviously even the pattern there but as long as you get it you know the best you can really use some of my washi tape there and stick that down and cut it out and it will give you that frame but I also want to keep this piece as well okay so then what I've gone and done is I've got a six by six card base here and I've got my acetate this is the 10 sheets that I've got loads in here because I've probably I've mixed quite a few packs together but it's the 12 by 12 acetate it's really strong stuff I just seem to use it for everything at the minute so I've got a piece here I'll give you the measurements in a minute because everybody's going to have actually I won't give you the measurement because you're not all going to have this die but basically what you want to do is lay it down you'll see here I've already gone and put some red liner tape because you're sticking on acetate I always say the red tape this stuff here is the best to use just pop it around so it's as close to the the inner frame as possible and then I'm going to lay my acetate down over the top covering all of the sticky tape just the width of the tape really and you just want to mark I'm going to mark with my scissors because you want this acetate to stay within the frame but over the inner frame you want it to be hidden but uh, you also need it to cover so that none of your pieces fall out so I will just snip it there so I know where to go on that side line that back up and then I'm just going to snip it there like so so making sure it's hidden is the key and then I'm just going to cut that remember where I am yeah, on my 
trimmer here and then that one there. And there you'll see it fits perfectly. So now we've got that nice window but you can't see the acetate popping up here but it's going to stick underneath there. So I'm going to remove all the backing off of this first. Okay, I've made lots of shaker cards. I have a playlist so there are some there that are very very easy, perfect for beginners and then you know there's some double shaker cards and things like that. Really really good. So just stick that down. Don't worry if you can feel some of the stickiness because you're going to be sticking it onto this anyway so you're not going to see it. But now give it a little wipe but I've got my window ready. Next I've got this here. This is my favourite now. This is all you'll see me use when I make shaker cards and it's the clear silicon foam tape. It's very sticky so you do get this packaging. It's kind of like the way the red tape comes. You get that plastic on both sides because this gets very sticky on the sides. This is super sticky. So I'm just going to peel it off of there and it's literally just the same as your foam tape. So you can use the normal foam tapes. I cut them down and use the greaseproof paper when I do that. Again you'll see that in my other shaker card tutorials. And then what I'm going to do, I seem to have got a hair there, is I'm going to run this now within this frame. So this I already checked before fits perfectly within this area. And then just work your way around and you want to make sure that you join up so butt them right up to each other because again if you're using what I'm using those little snowballs they won't fall through you know a small gap but you've got you've got some sequins with those tiny little bits that will get through anything so you do need to make sure that you just butt it right up so there's no gaps there each time keeping it hidden within that frame okay, so that's my window all prepared and then what we want to do first of all before we add the shaker parts is I want to stick this piece in the middle. Now it, it is going to go pretty much like that with a nice even border but I do want to check with this over the top that when I stick this down because this is the most important bit I want to make sure I get this within my frame. Okay like so. So I need to make sure that that piece is going to obviously sit perfectly as well. So I'm just going to use some of my liquid glue because this will give me some time to just position it if I need to move it at all. And I'm just going to hold it like that and I'm going to kind of pop it back in there. So back in it's like home, like so. Just hold it in place and then put the whole thing down and then let that drop down. And I just know, I can see there, I just need to push it up a little bit there. But that way you know you've got it perfect for when we sit this piece down. Actually I think I can go a little bit higher. This is what I mean, that's why it's good to use the liquid glue because you can just position it. That's it. Perfect. There we go. Okay so this is the white beads. I got this from Hobbycraft. There's lots of companies that do it. I'll share some links if I can find them. But I've put tape on the end but I'm just going to cut that open again. And um, I always like to do mine this way. Other people like to stick um, to tip everything inside the window but what I don't like is then having to you, you're just kind of going in blind really you can't see if you're going to get that perfectly lined up so I've never done my shaker cards like that I prefer to sprinkle everything onto this and then stick that over the top because that way you can see everything and you know you're going to get it all lined up however these are obviously do not sneeze do not breathe because <laughs> any bit of air and uh, yeah, these are going to go everywhere. And I think my mat's a little bit like bowed there, but it should be okay. But I'm just going to pop these out here. I'm going to have to kind of keep it flat like that. There we go. Now I'm not going to go as crazy as I did before with that like blizzard effect. So I think that's going to be enough. Pop that to one side. Oh, there we go. And just keep them all within that, for me, that red square. I've got a few little runaways there, but let them do its own thing. See, everything else is fine. Oh, there we go. Oh no, see if you knock it. What you don't want is anything within here because you've got to stick this down. So now I'm going to peel the backing off of this here. Okay, and then very carefully, I'm going to lie this down. Can you see the static? That's fine because they're sticking to the window, so I'm not worried about that. You could put an anti-static powder inside if you wanted to. Lay it down. Don't worry that they're all kind of stuck in the middle there. Because once we stick it down, make sure that's all 
solid. Get rid of those for the minute. And now give it a good old shake and they will start to move around. And I think that's better. There we go. It's really, really fun. It's got such a nice snow feel about it. So that's those. And then I'm just gonna do it the same. So you can see that I've got a lot more in that one, which still looks nice, but I've gone a bit less with that, that one there. I really like them. Then I'm gonna stick this down. So again, I'm gonna use the red tape and just, I don't wanna, is that still dry? I oh, know that's dry. So just on the back, I'm just gonna just run a strip. I'm not gonna cut it. Once you take the backing off, it will um, sort itself out. So I'm just being lazy. Make sure you got your card up the right way. This is when you don't want to go sticking it on upside down. And then for this one in particular, this is the bottom here with these two and then everything is facing the right way up. So I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit more towards the bottom so I can fit my bow in. And stick that one down. And then these here, I've already gone and popped some foam tape on the back. You even get a die to cut the tiny end out. So, you know, <laughs> Claire's thought about every bit of detail with this, it's so nice. So I'm gonna have Christmas wishes, what is it? Snowflake kisses and Christmas wishes. So we'll have that one down here. And then I'll grab my little and. If you've got tweezers and things like that, then that's gonna help a little bit. That's gonna go there. And then finish it off with the snowflake kisses. Such a sweet little sentiment. So. And then I've got my velvet bow and that is gonna go on the top. I think they look so, so pretty. I need to get my glue gun popped on so that can warm up. So I'll do that one in a bit and just show you it finished. But there is the card almost done. Really, really pretty. So that's that one. Then I'm gonna move straight on and I'm gonna finish and do this one here. So this time I've gone for different colors. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the, the frame all ready to cut, so it's using because you get with this one here, that's how it is. So what I've taken is the largest detailed one and then the next size with the detailed one. In between them, you get this straight one. So that's what I've done there to get that thicker frame. So I'm just gonna run that one through my machine. Okay, and it gives you that lovely stitched frame with all that detail, okay, like so. So that's gonna go on there, but I don't want this as the background. So I'm gonna go and cut this one again. In fact, I'm just thinking, no, I'm not gonna, no, I didn't actually, complete lie. I done it by free, freehand. So what you wanna do is start prepping this again. We'll do that in a moment. So I'm gonna go and run my red tape through this one here. Okay, so I've just prepped all that again. It's got a lot of stack static on it. So I will just run my embossing buddy little pouch over it and then just give it a wipe and that'll get rid of the static but there's the window done again and then you just want to measure whatever you want to go in the background I've got this green here which I really like so I'm just going to lay it again within this frame here just so that it will you know be slightly hidden but not poke out the sides so I'm just going to let's get my scissors there which is stuck to that red tape just roughly cut it first And I can just trim that one down. And that, I think, is going to work really nice. Let's just lift that one up behind there. Perfect. And because I've got that green in the holly, and once the snow's been added, I think it's going to look, yeah, it's going to look really sweet. So we want to then add the, oh, it was a little bit sticky there. Add that foam tape again, which does catch to everything. Look, <laughs> let's take that off and pop it in the bin. It's just all the backing. It's just stuck there to everything. There we go. And then I'm just going to again, just fits in here, but because it's clear, you don't see it. It's harder to see, you don't see it on the side. I mean, the white's fine anyway. I've used white for gosh, years and years and years, but it's, um, I don't know, it's just something about this clear. I really, really like it. 
Okay, so again, I've got this one is a five by seven card, and that's the nice thing about the dies. And I shared that when we done the when I done the unboxing, is that they are perfect for your six by six and your five by seven cards. So that is a five by seven shop brought card. That one was six by six. I did cut that one myself, but you can see how they fit perfectly. So they're made for this size card. So again, I just want to make sure that I get this, you know, lined up. That one should be fine because I've cut that one down yet. So I'm just going to grab my glue. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I think I've got a nice little window. Then again, we need to now stick all of these pieces in. So very carefully. You can tell I've got an uneven surface, but again, I'm just going to make sure that they're not on that white border. doesn't matter how they look like that. Again, take the backing off of this. Again, holding your breath, <laughs> stick it all down. It's, I would say it's harder with these than it is with sequins. Sequins don't move. You put, pop them on there, it's dead easy. So don't be, you know, thinking there's no way I can do that. Th these are, I think, because they're reacting to the static and they are, it's like working with air. They just move however they want. But now the effect is just so nice. I did go over that with my anti-static, I probably should have done it a bit more, but it will settle and the static will eventually disappear anyway. So, but yeah, they just look so much fun. So I'm gonna keep all of this and just pushing it off to the side. Okay, and then we need to decorate. So I've already popped some foam on the back of my owl. These ones here, I'm gonna pop some red tape on and I'm also gonna trim them a little bit. So what I wanna do, because the tape underneath this frame isn't obviously covering all of it you can actually like hook things underneath so this one here I'm going to just cut straight like that and then I'm just going to pop some red tape um, just just in a few areas really it just needs to kind of tack in tack in place so do the main one here I'll just say so you don't want anything that's kind of gonna you know catch on anything so just get all your main parts down take the backing off now I want to make sure the owl is in place so it's going to be about here so then what I so it's going to be by this little bit that sticks out so I can just lift that up with my pokey tool and then slide that under like that there we go and then I take the backing off the owl and then he can sit just kind of like that. I want him kind of overhanging a bit so his bowel is on the side there. Really cute. I've got the stars here as well, which again I've already popped some backing on, some foam. So I'm going to pop one there. And then this one here I had coming down from the top. So I end up actually cutting away. Let's go like that. So again, pop some of this on the back. Okay, so I've stuck that one there. Then I've got my have a hoot of the day, which I've just framed with the same green that I've used on the back. So that's going to go there. And then I'm going to pop another star just here. And then another one down in the left there. Okay, so there is the finished card. I think it looks so much fun. You've got sparkle, you've got shine, you've got the movement there from the the snow and it's just a really really fun card I love making shaker cards so there it is again in the blue a lot fuller like I said that's more of a blizzard <laughs> but still really fun it's entirely up to you I do I kind of call those more loaded shaker cards I've done loaded shaker cards where you just pack it so it doesn't really move at all that gives a completely different look so that's fun as well but you'll find all that in the playlist so that's those and then again oh I've got to stick that one on I'll do that you'll see it in the photos anyway but you can get the idea of how they look as well. So I have an absolutely gorgeous selection of Christmas cards, plus those ones that I did make for the samples as well for the show. I just think they are stunning. Love the images. Going to definitely be making some more using the teacup. He is just so sweet. I think I might put a bit of glossy accents on his nose actually just to give that a little bit of make it a bit more prominent. But yeah, absolutely love them. So I hope you've enjoyed the shaker card tutorial. All the links to everything, even down to like the card stock, I'll try and find that. I'll put the glossy accents. This is using white Nouveau drops. 
and that is these ones here. Again, I'm on about maybe even my third of these, simply white, perfect for when you want to add snow to the backgrounds and things like that. So again, I'll add everything that I have used, I will try and add below. But thank you for watching. Do go and check out the tutorials that Daisy May Claire's done on her Chanda. And yeah, until next time, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Bye.